That's right, ladies and gentlemen, he's back. Welcome back to another episode of Bring the Juice. Guys, some big news out of Colts Nation. A couple big notable news here, actually. Colts activate second round pick from this year's draft. Defensive lineman Dio Adangbo. He is officially active for the first time this season. They also activated linebacker Jordan Glasgow, more of a special teams type of linebacker from IR. And the bigger one here as well, they waive running back Jordan Wilkins and defensive tackle Khalil Davis. They also uh, activate, elevate running back Deion Jackson to the active roster, as well as safety Josh Jones to the active roster. So, Derek, a lot of shuffling going on on the Colts roster that today. What are your overall thoughts? First, we got to start with Dio because, I mean, we were all shocked that he got activated as early as he did. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. I, I'm still in shock. I mean, this is week eight. I thought it was going to be like something like another month from now that we might be able to see him. But now he's been practicing a little bit over the last two weeks, and now he's actually activated. Now, I'm going to be the realistic one here because I'm still, you know, one of those people that kind of understands that somebody coming off of that kind of injury yeah, he's not going to just get thrown straight into that role right away. But, uh, and I would expect, you know, maybe he gets a, a couple snaps uh, this week. Maybe, maybe he gets a couple, but I would not expect him to get any more than 10 snaps in that game. Uh, my guess is it's just going to be more of a feel for him. But nevertheless, I mean, it is truly remarkable that Dio is already back and practicing and getting ready. I mean, much, much sooner than what you and I originally thought he would. And, you know, to get a six foot six, 285 pound defensive end with insanely long arms is just absolutely the best thing the Colts could have right now, especially for someone they're looking for a pass rush towards the end of the year to try to get things going. Who knows? Dio might be the answer to that very soon. Yeah, you mentioned like you're probably not going to see a whole lot of snaps. I, I concur there because, especially because the Colts are healthy, you know, their whole defensive line is going to play. Like there's nobody, I don't think, out in this game for the first time in I don't know how long. So the Colts are healthy, but, uh, and Dio's still working back from that Achilles. Like he's, yeah. he, he may be good to go, but we even saw with Eric Fisher, right? I know he came back a little earlier, but he mm-hmm. still had some, some catching up to do, and he's still catching up. From that, those Achilles injuries can be really, they can hurt, man. They can take a while to recover from, even longer than maybe when they're on the field, they still just need to play a little bit and and get fully acclimated there. Um, But yeah, I mean, it's great to just get him some game action, though. You know, it's about time. And you mentioned the Colts really just desperately need a pass rush for sure. This will be the first time this season, obviously, that the Colts get Dio and Quitney Pay on the field together. And I know a lot of people were, I mean, really, really excited, us included. I know Derek. We talked about kind of our best, our favorite moves from the draft. I think yours was Dio Adangbo, if I remember, because of yes, the talent. It was. You said this dude could be even more talented than, than Quiddy. He could be even better oh, yeah. than Quiddy. Um, and and Quiddy's been really strong in the last couple of weeks. Like from yeah. BFF, he's been one of the best defenders in the league. So, yeah, I mean, getting Dio back, especially like you mentioned, trying to go on a run here. You think the Colts could potentially make a playoff push here. They're already on a two game winning streak, they've won the last three out of four. Now getting a little bit more of the pass rush um, help from Dio could really go a long way for this team if they really want to start contending. Um, and, and when you if you do get to the playoffs, getting a pass rush on some of those really elite quarterbacks in the league. So, yeah, great to get Dio back. So great to get Dio on the field for the first time. And I think they'll ease him into it. I don't think they absolutely have to have him yeah. play, you know, even 20% of the snaps, you know, they can just ease him into it, get him, get his feet wet a little bit at the NFL level. It will probably just- be close to a month before we finally start seeing the full Dio Odangbo hurricane effect. I mean, that's yeah. pretty much it. I think it's, it's probably going to be a little bit. So, you know, it's okay. Colts nation to be excited. We're obviously excited. Glad to have him back in, but fully expect him over the next two games to probably see very few snaps. Uh, it's just going to be one of those things. They want to ease him into it. 
make sure that Achilles isn't going to uh, have any reverse effects. But obviously, again, still a very encouraging sign because you're right. If this team does continue to push for the playoffs, it's another great potential weapon to have on the defensive line. Yeah, and people have to factor in the fact that he's only had two weeks of practice. He didn't have any training camp. He didn't have anything <laughs> like these right. other rookies did. So, I mean, he's playing catch-up already. We already knew that was going to be a thing this year. So, I think the Colts are going to just ease him into it, and I think that's that's what they should do, you know. So, um, But it's still good, you know, to get him back and now – finally yes. getting some extra help on that defensive line, especially on that defensive interior. You know, you feel like eventually he can be a really nice three backup three tech to force Buckner and also can just move around that defensive line as well, wherever yeah. you need him. So yeah, I'm excited for that. Uh, let's, let's also talk about Jordan Wilkins though, that that one was very surprising to me because, you know, Jordan Wilkins has been playing. He's had some non COVID illness and we don't really, didn't really get specified like, what exactly that was. Yeah. But he started practicing for the first time this past week for, for, you know, in the last couple weeks. So it was weird. It's kind of weird and interesting that the Colts just decided to cut ties with them. This guy that has been on this team and has given them good snaps when he's been on the field in favor for a guy like Deion Jackson, an undrafted rookie who, you know, we like, but it's just kind of interesting how the Colts just decided to make that move now. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's been one of those things we've been saying it all year is, you know, it's not always been the moves that the Colts have been making. It's just the timing of them. Sometimes it's just been kind of weird. Obviously, with Dio coming back onto the active roster and with Glasgow now coming back in, you have to make room somewhere. So that makes sense. Jordan Wilkins, who you haven't really used or had any reason to have for a while, you know, you obviously want to do that. And I mean, I'm sure that it won't take very long for Wilkins to find a home somewhere. I don't know whether or not they're going to try to – I would assume they would try to claim him off waivers, but, you know, I, I highly doubt that that will last very long. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll see. Even if they used Jackson in some way, you know, might use him on the special teams. We might see him occasionally. But, uh, yeah, you know, you had to make roster moves, and, you know, Wilkins was just the odd man out. and. You know, it kind of does suck because you're right. He hasn't played all year, uh, most of it due to that illness that he had that people are still not telling us what exactly that was. Uh, I don't know whether it was, you know, I don't know whether it was a serious health condition or not, but it would seem like it was pretty bad if it kept him out for a month and a half from playing football. But either way, yeah, I mean, that that was surprising, you know, because we've all said Wilkins is – you know, a very good running back and, you know, you, it helps to round out the running back room that we have, but obviously Marlon Mack on the trade block and then Wilkins now being waived, you know, they had to have somebody else to be uh, that future back. So Jackson might be that one. So I'm just curious, like it was just weird because the Colts have been rumored and, and, you know, Marlon Mack as well to try to find a trade for him. So why would you cut a guy like Jordan Wilkins at this point? You know, like, does this mean that the Colts maybe aren't going to trade Marlon Mack after all? I mean, I'm hmm. personally fine if they don't because, I mean, you got him cheap and he's a good back, you know? So yeah. I don't know if that changes their approach. Like, they were they were thinking about it, but now they're like, Marlon, you know, without Jordan here, we need you. I, maybe that's the move. I don't know exactly, but. Could be. Or yeah. just the fact that they felt uh, confident in Deion Jackson's ability and what they could he could provide them as a, as a potential third back in the future. Or even like, you know, for special teams perspective, you know, that's one of those things. But yeah, you're right. It, it does make you wonder, like, what does that exactly mean? I don't really think the uh, Marlon Mack rumors of being traded aren't going to stop. I mean, we've been hearing all week about Dion uh, or about uh, Deshaun Jackson being on the uh, trade block now, too, right? We heard that one about Marlon Mack being traded to the Rams for Deshaun Jackson. I'll do, this isn't what this podcast is about, but I'll kind of throw my two cents in there. If the if the Rams throw in a late round pick, I would be more than happy to take Deshaun Jackson and team him back up with Carson Wentz and put him in this offense and give Marlon Mack to a great team like the Rams where he can probably flourish. It seems like this move would be that would wouldn't be a bad move for either side because the Colts need that kind of playmaker to stretch the field. I know Deshaun Jackson's up there in age, but like. Ideally, you keep it for like one year. And you're going to do the same with Marlon Mack, so why wouldn't you 
use, you know, get something for him. So, yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you there. For fantasy purposes, I, I don't want Marlon Mack to go there because I don't want it to eat into Henderson's carries. But you know, that's selfishly <laughs> yeah. for me. But yeah, yeah man, um, th- these are just some some interesting moves. I think some moves that we didn't necessarily see coming. But I just love that the Colts are getting back Jordan Glasgow too. We didn't talk about him a whole lot, but yeah, you know, one of the better special teams players outside of George Odom on this mm-hmm. roster, I would say he's second best right now. Yes, um, in terms of like a gunner and, and what he does down the field. So yeah, good to get him back. And it seems like the Colts are like all the cards are out for this game, man. They're fully healthy, pretty much. Seems like about everybody's going to play that's questionable. And they got Dio Dengbo back, and they could activate that. You know, they could play him tomorrow. So. I don't know. It's just like, wow, this is do or die now for the Colts. Like they know that. And it seems like they're pulling out all the stops to try to make sure they're ready to go, man, for Sunday. It's going to be a fun matchup. I I cannot wait because I feel like the Colts, they know what's at stake here. They know their backs are against the wall. And I don't know. I just feel like when they do that, when they don't take teams for granted, they play really well, actually. So Yeah, and and this is – I think the Colts know what's at stake here. I mean, I think they know what's at stake. It, they lose this game. There is a very real possibility they don't win the division. I mean, it's almost likely they don't win the division. And then, uh, you know, they lose, puts them even further back from, you know, trying to make that playoff push. You win this game, you're right there in the midst of another playoff push, and we get to have uh we get to uh have Dan Orlovsky go on uh NFL live and be able to rub it in the faces of every single person who doubted him. So that's yeah. that's another reason why I'm hoping they win. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So say the Colts win tomorrow, they'll go to four and four, the Titans will go to five and three. So it's right there, man. It's right it's there. It's right there. Beach. So and then the schedule right after for the Colts, the next three games after, very winnable games. Oh, very, yeah. very winnable games. I mean, like so, I know, it, I know you never write a team off, but like the Colts aren't even playing Zach Wilson on Thursday night. So like, yeah, right, exactly. I mean, They're not even playing Zach Wilson of all things. Then they got to face yeah. the Jags, who obviously are not uh, doing very well right now. So there's a lot of good teams for the Colts to play and get on a win streak here. But this one, this is the one that matters more yep. than anything. Absolutely, and even if the Colts won a chance of the playoffs, like this is a big game in the AFC for yeah. standings and stuff like that. So, yeah, man, it's going to be a lot of fun. Seems like every everybody's geared up, ready to roll. I know we're excited for this game as well. And uh, some good news here from, from Colts Nation. I'm getting, uh, getting some key players back here that could potentially help if the Colts do want to make this playoff push. But, yes. All right, guys, that'll do it for this one. Thank you so much for tuning in. Really appreciate all your support and everything you do for us. Thank you to everybody who entered our giveaway. We gave away two Colts tickets to the Colts-Titans game yesterday then we're going to actually be giving away a couple of jerseys in the next couple of weeks. So keep an eye out for those. I mean, this giveaway, Derek was crazy. Like, Holy cow. We, we got a lot of new people. So if you're yeah. listening because of that giveaway, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Uh, honestly, and we'll have more, we'll have more chances. Yeah. So don't, don't be afraid to be sure to be sure to stick around and check our Twitters, check yep, our Twitters, absolutely. Instagrams, everything. We'll make sure to keep everybody updated. We're going to give away a few jerseys. So make sure y'all stay prepared for that. Yeah, that's going to be fun, man. But thanks, guys, for tuning in. Really appreciate it. And as always, go Colts.